Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Lee just read for you. I share with you today at verse 21. Mary will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This is the word of God before us here this morning. Please be seated. This morning, we're going to look at the greatest story ever told, the story of Jesus' birth here on this earth. Now, if you and I were going to be telling this story, we'd probably tell it a lot differently, wouldn't we? Because what we'd probably do is say that Jesus came down from heaven in the middle of earthquakes and lightning and all kinds of shooting stars. We'd say that all the people bowed down to Jesus in amazement. But that wasn't God's purpose, was it? No, God's purpose was he wanted to share his love with all of us. God's purpose was to have someone come to this earth to save us from our sins and from the fear of death. And so the story begins like this. Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph. And before they were married, Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Now, Joseph, he was a good man, and he didn't want to bring any public disgrace to Mary, and so he decided that he would end their engagement. But then an angel came to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because she's going to give birth to a baby from the Holy Spirit. When she gives birth, it'll be a son. And you're to call his name Jesus because he will save all people from their sins. Now, this took place to fulfill what the prophet Isaiah had spoken nearly 700 years before when he said a virgin will conceive and bear a son and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Well, Joseph awoke from the dream. He took Mary to be his wife. And they named him Jesus because he was going to save people from their sins. Wow. What a great story. It's the greatest story ever. Jesus here was God in the flesh, born as a little baby to poor parents to save people from their sins. This story is about God's amazing love for you and me. Corey Ten Boom's family, they helped Jews to escape from the Nazis during World War II. Now because of this, they were all arrested, thrown into prison, and later taken to concentration camps. Corey's father and Corey's sister died in those terrible concentration camps. But somehow, Corey was able to live through this terrible ordeal. A while later, Corey was asked to speak to some prisoners at a prison about her experience. Now, at first, the prisoners, they didn't want to listen to her because they didn't want to listen to someone who had no idea what they were going through. But when Corey started off, she said, when I was all alone in prison for four months, well, they all started to listen. They quieted down. They listened because Corey was one of them. Well, that's the story that I'm telling you about today. Jesus became one of us. Jesus became a human being and lived here on this earth. And the story about the birth of Jesus 
and about his living on this earth and then his death on the cross and then his resurrection from the dead, they're all about God's amazing love for you and me. And today we learn three great things about this birth of Jesus. First of all, we learn that love makes a plan. Love makes a plan. When you love someone, you build your lives all around them, don't you? You spend time with them, and you plan a future with them. Well, the Bible tells us that God chose us to be his children before the world even began. The Bible tells us that God planned for Jesus to die on a cross to forgive all of our sins. The Bible tells us that God planned for Jesus to rise from the dead, to overcome the fear of death, to give us the hope and assurance of eternal life with him in heaven. Wow. When you love someone, you plan your life around them. And that's exactly what God has done for us. God has planned a great future with us to be with him forever in heaven. It's almost unbelievable plan, isn't it? Secondly, we learn today that love keeps its promises. Love keeps its promises. Trust is really important in a relationship, right? If you want to have a healthy relationship, you need to be able to trust one another. When someone breaks promises to you, it's really hard to trust them, isn't it? But if someone keeps all their promises to you, well then, you feel loved by them and you're willing to trust them. Well, God always keeps his promises to you. More than 700 years before Jesus was, was born on this earth, the prophet Isaiah went to a man who was king. His name was King Ahaz, the king of Judah. Now, Ahaz, he was a wicked king. He, he never followed God's plan for him. He never followed God's will for him. And yet, God had Isaiah come to him to tell him good news. Because you see, there were two nations named Israel and Syria that were going to go and fight against Judah. And it was a very stressful time for King Ahaz. It was a stressful time for the people of Judah. But Isaiah came to offer some help because God didn't give up on King Ahaz. And that's when Isaiah gave him a promise. And you know the promise well. He promised him a virgin will conceive and bear a son. And he'll be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God gave this promise to King Ahaz that he was going to protect him and the people of Judah from being destroyed by their enemies. There was a French woman during World War I who was all stressed out. She was filled with worry and anxiety over all the things going on in the war. Her pastor told her that when she was afraid, if she would write down some promises on pieces of paper and put them into a, a, a wooden box, and then every time she was afraid, he said, just take one of those promises out and it'll help you when you're really filled with anxiety. The woman did this. Every time she became afraid, she would take one of these promises out, and it would help. One time when she was all stressed out, she reached into the box, and she knocked the whole box over. All the little slips of paper with God's promises fell out. And the woman at that time realized that all these promises were for her every day. And she didn't have to lose hope in God, because God always was going to keep his promises to her. Well, God's always going to keep his promises to you and me as well. We too never need to give up all hope in our lives, no matter how bad things can be. We too never need to be afraid because God always keeps his promises of love and care to us. God always promises he's going to forgive our sins. God always promises that when we leave this earth, we're going to have an eternal life with him in heaven. 
Thirdly today, we learn that love becomes a person. Love becomes a person. I mean, that's who Emmanuel is. Jesus is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Jesus became a human being when he was born on this earth as a tiny baby. Jesus became a human being and he lived here with other human beings on this earth. The fact of Jesus coming to this earth is proof that God never ever stops loving us. Years ago, Bono, the lead singer for U2, he went to a Christmas service on Christmas Eve. He went to St. Patrick's Cathedral on Christmas Eve. And he heard, as you could imagine, the traditional story there about the birth of Jesus on this earth. Well, this time it hit him in a different way. He started to cry and he thought to himself, love needs to have form. Love has to become an action. Love has to be something concrete. And that's what the incarnation of Jesus is. Jesus had to be made flesh because love has to be in the flesh. That's so true, isn't it? Love needs to have an action with it. Love needs to be something concrete. And that's what the incarnation of Jesus is for us. That's what it means when Jesus came to this earth to be flesh for us. Wow. Love becomes concrete in the birth of Jesus as a human being on this earth. So how are you going to prepare for Christmas this year? You're going to hear this story about Jesus' birth many times over this week. How are you going to prepare for it? Think about how important this birth of Jesus is for your life. Think about how in Jesus, God had a plan always for you. In Jesus, God always showed his love for you. In Jesus, God has become real for you. Jesus really is the proof of God's love. So accept Jesus again this Christmas into your own heart. And be sure and share this love of Jesus with someone around you. Let them know how real Jesus can be for them, too. God bless us all as we do that. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together.